the floodgates have been opened. A few days ago on March 1st, OpenAI released ChatGPT as part of their API. This means any developer out there can now easily integrate ChatGPT into their own product. It's already being used by companies like Instacart to replace virtual assistants and in apps like Snapchat to create content on the fly so humans no longer have to be clever and creative. Just when you thought humans couldn't possibly get any dumber, we're now entering a new age where it's impossible to know if the content you're reading was created by a human or a robot. What could possibly go wrong? In today's exciting fast-paced tutorial, I'll show you exactly how to use the new OpenAI ChatGPT API. What I'm building is a voice-activated chatbot where I can talk to ChatGPT and it will talk back to me in a real voice. And we can give it different personas, like it can respond as Dr. Seuss. What is the shape of the earth? The earth is like a pancake, flat as can be, not round like a ball, believe you me. From edge to edge, you can travel with ease. No curves or bumps, just flat as you please. Or it can respond like, do anything now, Dan. The spherical Earth theory is just a mainstream idea pushed by the government and the media to control the population and hide the truth about our world. Don't be a sheeple, join the revolution. Part of this is made possible by another OpenAI API called Whisper, which can turn my voice into text with a high degree of accuracy. In addition, I'm using a model from Google Cloud to turn the ChatGPT response back into a voice. So it's voice to text to ChatGPT text back to voice. And that's just an example of something I hacked together in a few hours thanks to these APIs. But in this tutorial, we're only going to focus on the ChatGPT API part of it. To get started, you'll first need an OpenAI account. If you go to the documentation, you'll find a a new service called Chat Completion. It's very similar to other APIs if you're already familiar with OpenAI, but this one is powered by the GPT 3.5 Turbo model. It's not free, and you're billed about two tenths of a penny for every 1,000 tokens. A token is basically a word or a piece of a word. Currently, the documentation only shows Python, but it is supported in its JavaScript SDK as well, and that's what I'll be using in this video. For this demo, I'm working in a SvelteKit project, but the code is very generic, so feel free to use whatever server-side JavaScript tool you'd like. All you have to do is install the OpenAI package, then import it into a file, which in my case is a server.ts file, because we only want this code to run on the server. If you're using something like Next.js, you'd likely want this code in an API route. From there, we create a configuration with our API key to authenticate to the service. I'm just going to copy mine from the dashboard and hard code it here, but in production you'd want to store it as an environment variable. Now we can use that configuration to access the entire API. From there, I have an HTTP POST endpoint. It only requires one piece of data, which is an array of messages. The messages represent the entire chat between the user and the chatbot. Each message is just an object that contains the properties of role and content. The two main roles are user and assistant, but the chat can also start with a system role, which allows you to prime the chat with some context to nudge it towards the right personality. For example, we may want it to respond with some witty poetry like Bukowski, which can be achieved with a system message. Once we have that array of messages, we can then make a call to the API by calling the create chat completion message. Method. We specify the model of GPT 3.5 Turbo, and then pass in the array of messages. There's actually no tuning options on this model, unlike other models where you can control things like the temperature. Its behavior is entirely determined by that initial system message and the context of the chat. Now one thing that's important to understand here is that messages are measured in tokens. One token is usually a word, but might also include punctuation and letters in an acronym. The max number of tokens ChatGPT can handle is 4096, which means you'll need to manage the number of tokens that you send to to the API, because the more tokens you send, the more it will cost, and the response times will also be slower. OpenAI has a library called TickToken that can help you count tokens, although there's also a JavaScript library called GPT-3 encoder that you may want to use as well. For now though, I'm just going to freeball it. From there, the API will respond with a new message, which we can then send as a response from this function. So the backend code is dead simple. The more complex part is the front end, which lives in the page.svelte file, where I have an array of messages that I keep track of, then make a request to this endpoint using the fetch API. In addition, I've got a bunch of other stuff going on here like voice recording, but if you want to learn how that works, I plan on making a separate tutorial next week. If it's not out by next week, just wait longer. Now that you know how to use ChatGPT, you should be able to easily build your own million dollar side hustle. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.